about the lack of people and people coming. so much. Um, welcome to Spaceport Cornwall, or the very edge of Spaceport Cornwall. Uh, I'm sure you can see out the window there a beautiful 747 parked up with a rocket under its wing. So it's a real spaceport. Um, it's a really exciting time for us here at Spaceport Cornwall. My name is Melissa Thorpe and I'm the head of Spaceport Cornwall and I've been part of it since it started in 2014. Um, and in this role for almost two years now. So I'm really proud to have everybody here. I was just saying up in, up in the hangar, what has felt like a bit of an ethereal project for many years is very real, um, all due to the incredible technology that um, Dan and his team at Virgin Orbit have brought over here. Um, we're really keen to take questions today um, and just to update you on where we're at with everything. We have a lot of people coming through the site today and tomorrow, I think almost 400. And it's, that's a huge moment in itself because we finally get to share what all this hard work has been about um, and you know, just get everybody excited. Um, there's a lot of pessimism and things happening in the world and I think a bit of optimism and hope um, and excitement and something good is, is what we all need right now. Um, I'll let the panel introduce themselves because um, they're the best at that. But you know, we're just we're just really excited to to hear hear some of your questions, and I'll come back and, and, and talk to you how that's going to work in a second. Dan. Hi, I'm Dan Hart, the CEO of Virgin Orbit. Uh, we're a commercial space flight company uh, who have brought um, a new technology to space flight uh, that's parked outside currently uh, here at uh, Spaceport Cornwall. Uh, good morning, I'm Ian Annett, I'm the Deputy Chief Executive of the UK Space Agency and also the Senior Responsible Owner in Government for the UK's launch program. Very excited to be at this point. It forms part of a broader launch program for the UK that's catalyzing investment here for the, uh, for the space sector. I'm Councillor Lewis Gardner, I'm the Cornwall Councillor for Newquay here and uh, also the Portfolio Order and Cabinet Member for the Economy and Cornwall Council own the airport here in, in UK and have invested in the spaceport right from the start of the project sort of eight years ago. So we uh, remain deeply invested both financially and, uh, and sort of spiritually in the spaceport project and so we'll continue to back it. Great, and I think the plan now is to open the floor to questions. If you can ideally direct your question to one of us, we don't have a lot of time. So um, we work as a team and if you can direct your questions to one of us, we'll choose one of us to, to answer that question. I think Jess is going to come around with, with the microphone, <coughs> so if you wait to Jess to come, come to you to ask, ask your question. Hi, it's Ollie from Cornwall Live. Uh, my question is for the CAA. I know it's a hard one, but it has to be done. Has the license been given, been granted to Virgin Orbit to finally launch? Ollie, actually I'm from the United Kingdom space agency. Sorry, my Which mistake, is, yeah. my mistake. No, that's fine, I'm, I'm going to take that one all, um, all the same. We're still working through the licenses at the moment. You'll appreciate, of course, it's an immensely complex operation and uh, we're doing it for the very first time here in the UK, as are Virgin Orbit, of course, doing it for the very first time in the UK. And I'm sure I would speak for my CAA colleagues in saying that actually the primary, primary driver here, of course, is safety. So making sure that the safety case is um, uh, meets all of the regulatory uh, standards that the CAA have put up as part of our licensing. And they are, of course, going through this for the first time as well. But um, that's a normal process. You would want us to make sure that all of these launches are safe and can be successful um, as well. And uh, yeah, I, I, I just think that's part of the, the normal process, but it hasn't been granted yet, but um, that's, you know, that's, that's to be expected at this point. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. Okay. Just Ian, uh, Andy Davis, Channel 4 News. Just following up from that, given that you haven't got the license yet, is this definitely going to happen? So, uh, yes, of course it is. Um, and you know, clearly the question that follows on from that is that I'll figure it fast is, is when is it going to happen as well? Uh, and again, I'd say that it's a, it's a very complex operation. There are te technical aspects that I'm sure Dan would want to speak to. There are weather aspects, of course, as well. 
and there are licensing uh, points that we need to go through, whether they're conditions associated with a license as well. But certainly we're on track to deliver a launch in 2022, which has always been our objective. Jordan. Thank you. This question is directed to uh, Virgin Orbit. It's actually a two-part question. Uh, first, on the positive side of things, um, what have you learned from Spaceport Cornwall in terms of how much they've been able to accomplish with such incredibly limited funding compared to what we have in the United States? But also, secondly, given these delays, how is this impacting Virgin Orbit's overall schedule, given that you are planning to do another launch for Mojave by the end of the year? So first of all, you know, this mission is all about partnership. Um, and it's a partnership that has really enabled an enormous amount of work. Um, and so it's more about people than it is about brick and mortar, although there's some wonderful brick and mortar that's been placed in, that we're, we're operating in. Um, I mean, the partnership with uh, Spaceport Cornwall, uh, the people who are enabling progress, um, the partnership with the UK Space Agency, with the RAF, and let me say, Perhaps most importantly, the partnership with our customers who are flying on this mission. Um, that's the reason why we fly. For the commercial space flight missions that are flying, for the uh, allied collaboration that's going on uh, between the UK and the, and the US um, is, is really noteworthy. Um, and we're honored to be a part of that. Um, so it's, um, it's been an incredible effort. I mean, we transformed um, a bare apron of cement into a space operation complex in a matter of a handful of days. You know, uh, a, a C-17 was coming in with a 747 while we headed off for a training flight. I mean, that's what that day felt like. Um, so the team's done an incredible job. Um, clearly, you know, the, the regulatory process and working through has been um, a, a lot of work. Um, but w our purpose is opening up space for um, our customers, for, um, for places like Cornwall here in the UK, which um, we jointly are, are opening up a whole gateway to space, uh, at the, the economic aspects of that, um, the government uh, capability aspects of that, and the allied collaborations for that. So we see it as worth it. Next. Uh, this is for whoever best to answer it. Uh, you're still waiting for the CAA approval. Theoretically, once you get that, what are the time scales involved? Who do you have to notify? In theory, how quickly can that 747 be up in the sky once you've got the go ahead from the CAA if that happens? I'll start. All right, you yeah, start. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, again, it, of course, it's an immensely complex operation, and, and we're, we're approaching it um, uh, cautiously in terms of it is the first time we've done it, so it has to be safe. And of course, we have to notify a number of other, other different nations as Cosmic Girl flies through other people's airspace as well. And, uh, and therefore, we're working very closely with other nations' airspace operational teams, with other governments to make sure that we've got the government to government agreements in, uh, in place. All of those kind of come together for that for that launch moment as well. So again, we're on a trajectory that will take us to that moment. Um, and then, of course, there are the other as the technical aspects, of course, that uh, the Virgin Orbit need to undertake in order to make sure they can condition and prepare the payload and the rockets before um, before their missions. So I don't know if we about that. Yeah, I mean, I clearly we've come a long way. I mean, we have a launch system that's on the runway or, or on the apron. Um, and, and ready for operations. Um, um, you know, any mission, any spaceflight mission requires a, a focus, um, and there are risks and issues that we will deal with and, and manage along the way. Um, we're anxious to get into operations to make sure that we can mitigate those risks. We can look at the weather, we can choose our days carefully and, and have a successful mission. Um, you know, the timeline, we will work as, as much as, as practical and, and as Ian said, as, as much as is safe to assure that we're keeping pace uh, while we're waiting for the, the next gate to open up, which the next gate is the spaceport license. 
Um, so you know, it's we're in a little bit of a tricky spot right now, um, but we're we're progressing forward. Systems healthy, um, and hopefully in the coming days we'll get through that next next gate, um, get into our launch rehearsal mode, and then it will be very soon after that when we can go ahead and fly. Hi, I've got a question from Mel actually. Can you tell us a little bit about how it feels to have got this far, to have everybody on site here at Space Popcorn today, and what that means to you and your team? That was a good plant, wasn't it, Jess? No, um, I mean, it's it's surreal still. I think seeing Cosmic Girl land, it, it completely changed the game, and I don't know if Lewis would agree, but for Cornwall to feel it and see it and smell it and hear it, all those things, you know, it, it's really captured the imagination of the local community, and that's why we're here. Um, for us, of course, it's amazing to have Virgin here, but what we're really keen for this to do is to attract other businesses here, but also to inspire the next generation. You know, my team, who you've probably met downstairs and are scattered through the room, we're, we're a small, small team, but we, we live and breathe this, and this is for, you know, our belief in, in what this can achieve for Cornwall and, and the children of Cornwall, especially. I don't know if, if Bruce wants to add, but seeing everybody here and building off their excitement, I, it hasn't gotten old to me to see that out there, that system, every day when I come up to work. It's so exciting. Um, and so it's just to share that with everybody has been amazing. I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, hugely. So th this was a journey we started eight years ago, um, and probably many people said we couldn't do it, it couldn't be done. Um, but not only are we here right now, we're the first. We're not just the first in the UK, we're the first in Europe, and that's incredibly special for Cornwall. Um, you know, we led the world for a long time in science and technology and engineering, and we forgot that. And, and this has reminded us of that. And, and for me, as, as a local person, I live literally four minutes drive away from here. My daughter goes to the closest primary school. I mean, imagine being a young seven-year-old girl, and you grow up in Cornwall, and everybody says to you, if you want to you want to do an impressive job you need to leave Cornwall um, and then all of a sudden this thing called a spaceport comes along and that little seven-year-old girl gets brought up here sort of by her daddy and she says you know daddy I want to be an astronaut and I want to be involved in space and you say yes you, you can you can do it right here well you don't need to imagine that little girl because that little girl's seven years old and she's my daughter Eva and, and, and that actually happened and it's happening all over Cornwall um, with our young people, so as a council, you know, I've, I've said it many times, as a council, we haven't just invested in the spaceport, we've invested in the entire sector, and we haven't just invested in that, we've invested in the hope of our children, and, and to be able to give that, as a council, it is incredible, and we are right there now, we can bring children here, and we can show them, and we're right there, and it's about to happen, and that's incredibly important. Jordan. Jordan Wright, Angry Astronaut, sorry about that. Um, again, <laughs> to, uh, again, this is directed to Virgin Orbit. Obviously, this is an incredibly important mission on many levels. We have anomalies on a regular basis uh, in the U.S., but at the same time, Virgin Orbit hasn't had an anomaly since your first attempt uh, when you've had a problem there. But other than that, you've been flawless. So what have you done to, uh, to have such a good record? And what have you done to make sure this one goes off well, given the importance of the mission? You know, I mean, it's all about people and the people on the team and how they work together, uh, obviously, across processes that we've been putting and have been put in place. Um, but it's, you know, we, we work hard to keep the focus on the mission and on our customers um, and their precious payloads that are put on. Um, I remember our, you know, as you mentioned, our, our first test flight, we had an issue and we were, um, we were working to our second one. And um, I went to our customer at that point and I said, you know, I understand we had our, an issue with our first flight. Uh, we'll do a second test flight if you'd like. And to NASA's credit, um, they said, no, we'll fly. Um, at which point I gulped kind of hard. Um, <laughs> And my team made this video, um, and they interviewed each of the principal investigators who were working on these spacecraft for years. And they, we showed that to the team, and there was a joint gulp. Um, and it really, I would say, it solidified a 
clear reason why we exist, which is to get this innovation and to make these, uh, the open up these doors and make these spacecraft uh, and their experiments possible or their information possible. Well, the team r rallied. We did a flawless mission and delivered 12 satellites precisely to orbit on that mission. And, and it's that spirit around the purpose of a company and why we drive to technical perfection and why we drive to make sure that we're collaborating and coordinating and everybody's aware of issues and problems and we can talk openly and solve. That's the culture that we work really hard to build. And the results, you know, we're, we're very happy with. Um, you're never over. You're never done. Your next mission requires the same thing. Thank you. Another question here. Sorry, it's, it's a question I'll ask you in later today. So if you don't mind, Dan, could I ask you now, uh, for your perspective on when this rocket actually launches, how big a moment do you think it will be for the British space sector? Well, I think it's a great beginning. I mean, it's a door slamming open. Um, and, and I mean, the British space sector has been a vibrant um, community for years, decades. Um, small satellites, uh, you know, to a large ex extent have been an idea that really germinated here. Um, and and the, the industry now is just so focused, so and has you know has, has taken it, you know, by leaps and bounds. Um, so you know, I, I think that you know the the ability to fly to space is clearly um, a really important link in the value chain of going to space, whether it's through commercial, scientific, or national security uh, points of view. And so it's the beginning of a, of a, a huge push forward through that door. Sorry, it might be a stupid question, but what happens after the launch? In terms of going forward, which you've done Yeah. What um, from a, in Cornwall? Yeah, from a spaceport um, perspective, we, like Dan just said, we look at the, the next one. Um, we'll, we'll look at, you know, a couple of year going forward. Um, we also have other customers that will be operating from the site. We've announced a partnership with CR Space and Dream Chaser as a return landing location for them. Um, but the true value, I think, to Cornwall will come from the supply chain and the development of the cluster, building on what Goon Hilly's done. Um, our new facilities up on site, um, we have a, an adjacent facility that will be completed in March that's already full of satellite companies, um, data companies, um, universities, academics. We are theming an all-around environmental intelligence in space and more responsible launch practices through the life cycle of the satellite. Um, so for us, it's developing that, that cluster while still looking to, to launch um, these amazing spacecraft. And, and I think Dan hit it on the head where, you know, at the end of the day, the superstars are, this, are the satellites and the spacecraft. And we're really lucky that this afternoon we have a lot of those people coming through to see to see what we've been doing with their, with their satellite. Um, and the supply chain coming tomorrow again to show them, you know, what, what they've been involved in and what the opportunities are for them. You know, again, for Cornwall, it's not just about being a space company. We have marine businesses here. We have mining businesses that want to kind of harness space and space technology um, to make their business um, and benefit from it as well. So we're working with so many different businesses. I think when you come back this, even this time next year, you'll, this whole area will be even more buzzy than it is today, just with some incredible you know, companies accessing the, the facilities. I just add to that as well. I mean, it's a it's a it's a right question to ask about what's next. And um, when you look at what the government has done in terms of catalyzing the first steps for that to create a commercially sustainable launch capability, uh, you have to look at what's happening in the market. So uh, only I think ten years ago there was only something like fifty small sites that were launched. Last year there were seventeen hundred. And that's seen a massive trajectory of a lot of commercial satellites going up into space. Therefore, the demand on launch services has, 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 con has grown considerably. If you put that alongside the amount of private equity and private venture and investment that's taken place since so last year, globally, it was something like 15 billion. Um, and that doubled it from the year before, 15 billion dollars. So there is an immense interest both in terms of access to space for small satellites 
and also uh, capital being invested in land, so improving the economy. Uh, so there's part of the market that, of course, and there is an opportunity by catalyzing that investment and capability in the UK that, that all spaceports across the UK can, um, can get after as part of a commercially sustainable um, op opportunity. So kind of what's next is very much how does the sector want to take it forward? How can we support it in the government in terms of saying, okay, can we build on, um, build on catalyzing that investment and then developing further opportunities for, uh, for launch operators on a commercial basis rather than a government funded basis? I think sort of Cornwall specifically, you know, Melissa's right, you know, this is just the start. Um, and you can look out the windows here, you've seen the site, you can see the space we've got available. We're an enterprise zone here on the, here on the, uh, the Aero Hub. And we really are ready uh, for that inward investment and that, that large expansion of the space on the aerospace sector off the back of this first launch. Um, you know, we'd absolutely want to see small satellite construction here in, here in Cornwall. The UK leads, leads the way in, in that sector anyway. And if we can get harnessed part of that market, that's hugely important to the future economy of Cornwall. So, so as Melissa said, it's not just about this first launch for us as a council, it's about how we move forward now. That expansion into opportunities for the other sectors which we've got emerging here in, here in Cornwall, whether that be floating offshore winds, tech mills, um, uh, you know, many of the other sectors which we've got which are emerging here, this is all based on, you know, and it's all hanging off the success of first launch and then how we move forward. That, I mean, that's, sorry, that's one thing I will say on that. The, the heuristic after news is there are more satellites built in Scotland than anywhere else outside of California, here in the UK. So why should you then pay for them to be shipped around the world and launched <coughs> elsewhere? We should be using UK sites to launch them from, right here down at Cornwall. So that's an opportunity, you know, that we should be grabbing and, and certainly rattling and making sure that we exploit it, both for the economy, um, both in terms of delivering our skills within the UK, but also, as we've said, inspiring the next generation of people, whether you're scientists, engineers, lawyers, um, philosophers, about whether you mine in space or not. You know, there's, 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 once you start doing it, it grows out so rapidly. Very exciting. One more over here. Um, yeah, just for Melissa, um, can you just explain in terms of the preparations on the ground, you know, what's going on up at the site at the moment, what's left to actually do on the preparation side? From a spaceport operations perspective, we're, we're ready to go. Um, I think we're just here to now enable what, what Dan and his team needs to do. For the launch day itself, um, there will be notifications around the area of what's happening, information sharing to, to the residents as well as the businesses. We're working really closely with them on, on what means for them, what that means for them on launch day. Also the public, you know, can they come up and see it? That's a question we get a lot, asked a lot. Yes, we will have an area for the public to come and watch that's at a safe distance. We're putting our add-on. So preparation wise, we're kind of shifted from more of the you know the operations preparedness because we're we're pretty much done from our side. Uh, the airports team are ready to go. Um, and we're shifting now towards kind of handling the event itself, the launch, making sure people everybody's safe, um, sticking within within the license and the and the safety case within that. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of the hard work from our end has been done. We've built the facilities, which you know we, we from groundbreak to completion was almost 12 months we've done that really quickly and just just supporting Dan and his team where, where they need it at, at the minute whether that's just getting the Californians somewhere nice to eat around Cornwall and making sure they feel at home Thank too you, <laughs> but, um, you know finding anything that they might need supply chain wise with any of the businesses down here as well so we, we're just kind of here to help now one more over here and then we'll call it a wrap good morning Melissa and the team Linda Taylor leader of Cornwall Council We've had some truly magnificent, iconic moments in Cornwall. Last year, G7, uh, seeing Air Force One Cosmic Girl land here at Newquay was the start of that huge excitement. Uh, as a local authority, we've absolutely supported the space programme. When you meet Melissa, you can't but get caught up in that enthusiasm and drive. And for us here in Cornwall, um, you know, this is the start of that space adventure creating research and development, uh, turbocharging the economy, and for us in Cornwall, the sky is not the limit. Thank you. <laughs> Great. I think if that's, if that's it for questions, um, again, thank you so much for, for coming. We'll see you back here for launch. Um, we can't wait. And yeah, any, anything else you need from, from us, please, through Justin Georgia and the team at, at Halo or through Alison at, at Virgin Orbit. Um. <laughs>
again, I thank you.